on the metal like that was obviously so it would be preserved. When this was unrolled and translated, it turned out to be a treasure list, a temple treasure list, a list of the treasure of the temple. And uh, there were all kinds of theories why they would be having a group that you'll later talk about are the Athens, why they would be in control of a temple treasure list. But what happened was this made people think maybe it isn't just Essenes we have here, but more revolutionary groups, zealot Essenes, groups like that. And the editing team that had control began to worry about the relation of this to Christianity. And so really a blanket of secrecy came down from 55 until the late 80s. Okay, and just to try to uh, pin you down on this one point, Am I'm I not correct? sure I'm going to be pinned down, but <laughs> okay. go ahead. Okay, but am I correct that this Father DeVoe, the Catholic priest, was the chief man of the team in charge of the Dead Sea Scrolls and um, at least the majority of the other men on that team in charge of the Dead Sea Scrolls were also, also Catholic? Is that correct? Well, there was an international team put to... Uh, put together and originally there were some protestant members of that team but as things went on the feelings exacerbated and most of the protestant members either were forced off or for one reason or another left 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 the team uh, the original editing uh, uh, committee uh, was always Judenrein. that means there were never any jewish scholars on it so uh, it wasn't really an international team at all but yes the most sensitive documents what we call the extra biblical documents went under the control of a largely uh, circle of people with strong relations um, to the church. Okay. Now, Dr. Eisenman, the, the Catholic Church for 2,000 years... I want to I get been... too deep into the Catholic Church here because that's not my, uh, that's not my uh, uh, subject that I want to deal with too much. But go ahead, I'll listen to it. Sure, but, but to lead into something that you're right. uh, personally um, noted for, which is the freeing up of some of these Dead Sea Scrolls, it's good to first point out that there was something that needed freeing up. Right. Um, the Dead Sea Scrolls could impinge upon Christian doctrines, Christian church doctrine, dogmas, church, church doctrine, dogmas. Right. At that time, and it was all one church and in the West, and later on, it, it became yeah. brought up many and, churches. And whether we're talking about the Catholic Church or mainline Protestant churches, they have some cherished doctrines that when some ancient manuscripts are discovered, and those ancient manuscripts might impinge on some of the cherished doctrines of the church, obviously there's going to be a certain amount of concern. Now, whether or not there was an actual attempt to cover up sensitive aspects of the Dead Sea Scrolls that might, in fact, impinge on church doctrines, or whether it was simply um, jealous scholarship, or what, no matter what it was, it's a fact well documented by many writers that for a long period of time, scholars such as yourself at universities who wanted access to the Dead Sea Scrolls couldn't get that access. The access was denied. Well, absolutely. People were not, anyone who was outside the inner circle, the inner team, was denied access to these scrolls. Uh, uh, Professor Gold, the University of Chicago, even in the early 70s, describes the pain he went through, and he was a, a pretty uh, established scholar at that time um, uh, in trying to get access and was totally denied. When I was in Jerusalem as a National Endowment for the Humanities Fellow at the Auburn Institute in Jerusalem in 85, 86, I was denied, and, and that's what really uh, turned me on to get into this. So people were being denied. Uh, but if you uh, speak to the academic establishment that ran this, they said, well, again, it was to keep the crazies away, that is, unqualified uh, uh, people. The re I actually had people on the team, working on the team, who used that language to me. We wanted to keep the crazies away. The reason for this was that in 1955, when these, and this is in Bajan Lee's book, very well documented, when uh, this Copper Scroll came into being and the existence of it, uh, 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 another father, who was uh, Father DeVoe's assistant, called Father Milik, uh, a Polish priest from Poland, um, was really the man who was the workhorse on the team. He was working on the Copper Scroll. And uh, he didn't get that published till the mid-late 60s, till the middle, late part of the middle uh, 60s. So it took him 10 years to work on that scroll. 
And uh, uh, John Allegro, a Protestant member of the team who was later forced off the team, uh, documents in his correspondence and in his books the pain he felt in, in not being allowed to talk about the Copper Scroll for 11 years, even though his book, Dead Sea Scrolls, came out in 1956. So people like him were frozen out totally and finally pushed off the team. So Which, there was a certain core of people who got the most sensitive documents. Yeah, yeah. so there was, there was this um, team in charge of the Dead Sea Scrolls and other scholars unable to access those scrolls. Absolutely not, yeah. And even our, our viewers, I know that most of the, the general folk that I speak with about the Dead Sea Skulls, they remember seeing over a 20 or 30 year period newspaper articles about scholars complaining that they couldn't get access to the Dead Sea Skulls. And then, and most of the folks watching tonight will remember in the 1990s, early 90s, something occurred. That some, something you know, has to do with, well, with, with, yeah. with yourself. Well, and and, and let, me, let me ask you the question this way. Um, in the 1990s, you became a point man in the campaign to free up access to the, late to the 80s, unpublished, okay, to the unpublished Dead Sea Scrolls. I guess the campaign began. I'll tell you the, the story. End. When in, in 85, 86, when I was at the Albright Institute on a National Endowment for the Humanities Fellowship, hope they don't cut the National Endowment for the Humanities out, by the way, very good organization supported people like us going to the Middle East and studying in institutions like the Albright Institute, which is the, the focus of American archaeological work in the Middle East. When I was there, there was nothing I could do. And had I known the scrolls were at the Huntington Library, not far from my home institution in San Marino, California, in Southern California, I'd have just as soon stayed home because there was more I could have done at the Huntington Library than I ever could have done in Jerusalem. But of course you had no way of knowing No, I didn't that. know that at that time. But as part of my adventures, I was shuffled from pillar to post. And another scholar came in with me at one point to the officials in the Shrine of the Book in Israel, uh, a, a scholar called Philip Davies from the University of Sheffield, who also was a Dead Sea Scroll expert Protestant, who also couldn't get in and get any access. Nobody could get any access to any documents. What's the problem with that? The problem is, as an historian, you have to have all the data before you on the table. You can't be in a situation where you have some of the data and then a, another scholar says to you, oh, well, you haven't seen such and such. Oh, you don't know. Or they drop a document on you that you've never seen before that you didn't refer to in your work, which makes all your work uh, totally obsolescent. So you can't be in that situation as an historian. That's what I told them. What I said was, it has to be all open. And in 1986, Davies and I went into this uh, official in the Israel government and said, well, you should have gone to Father DeVoe. By that time, Father De DeVoe was dead and there was a successor, Father B Benoit, who was the head of the Dead Sea Scrolls e editorial team. So then Father Benoit told us, well, you should go to the Israeli